Okay, my friends, another shocker du jour. This is a fingertip. And these little holes here are right underneath the fingernail, which was here. This little bubble right here is blood. Because when this thing died, the fingertip was facing downwards. And all the blood tried to get out. And it couldn't get out, so it poked a hole through the end of the fingertip. Now I'm going to turn this over and show you. And I can tell you almost exactly how it was oriented. You see those three little holes in there? I have a, I have a, uh, ap that's the apical tuft. I have one here, it's, it's, it's so identical, it's unbelievable. Now that is the fingertip. And back here there's another anchor here which is part of the finger. And, and now I'll show you, you see these little stripes and straps? Where do you see the other side? All right, now I'm going to turn it over. Boom. Now, I don't have any water on it yet, so you can't see it real good. But this ran out from the artery. You can actually see there's some still fingerprints on here. I think. It's hard to say. I'm going to get right up close and look at it, but I think there is still some fingerprints in with, um, amongst the blood right in here. Now, so that's where the blood ran out. You see all these straps and stripes down here? That shiny looking stuff. You see the crystal running through here? This is olivine. All right, and that's where the blood ran out and congealed on the bottom. And there's actually a couple of little gemish looking things on the end here. When I put water on there, you'll see. I'm going to put it in my jig so that I can move it around and be a little more natural looking. But watch this. i got to show you this. This is just amazing. All right. This is what's at the end of a fingertip. It sits right there. And all these little holes here. I'm going to turn the light on. We'll lose that. But you used to be able to see this. Well, maybe you didn't lose it all the way. You see this? Those are those holes right there. This is what attaches right to the end of your fingertip. And all the, the little... T there would have been balls in there at one time. You see that? It's, just a, I don't, it's identical. Alright, look at how exactly identical this is. Even the ball right at the very end. And these little holes right here. The same thing. You see this? This is how that thing locks into your body. And this was the fingernail right here. And that is blood. All right, now I'm going to be able to manipulate this around a little bit. All right, this is about the same size as my fingertip. Now, this is what happens with blood when it comes out on the end there. Here, let me turn this layer off so that we can see this a lot in a lot better color. Alright. This is the fingertip. This is the top, the apical tuft. So we're coming over here to where the blood has drained out. Now I'm going to keep rotating around. That blood drained out right there. Whoops. To the bottom here. Let me tighten it up again here. All right, there we go. Now, you see this stuff here? That's grip skin. That is tough, tough, tough skin. Now, this this might be fingerprints. I don't know. Oh, oh, whoops, hold on. I don't think it is, to be honest with you. Now that I'm looking at it. get it really locked in place. I thought there might be some right in here. Let's come right down on that. Let's see what we can see, if anything. It's 
sometimes you can see the pattern. Look at that, that's all blood and lint. <laughs> Hold on a second. See all the different colors? That's what happens with blood. Now this is a mud fossil. And that's the blood that leaked out the tip and congealed on the bottom here. And I don't see anything that I could consider to be fingerprints at the moment. I, I don't think we're going to see any fingerprints. But what I do want you to see is this stuff here, how, what it looks like. You know, there might be some fingerprints there. Hold on, hold on. I can see something that might be fingerprints. Let me see if I can get the light. Well, I'm not going to search for fingerprints. I'll be here all day. But I can tell you what, it's a fingertip. Of that, there is no question in my mind. All right, this is the mud fossil I made here in my little lab. It took about eh, six months, maybe not even. And, but I didn't do it right. I got to be honest with you. I didn't know what I was doing. I used telluric currents, which are a tiny, tiny little bit of DC current flowing through a solution of mud and, and uh, sand and so forth. I didn't know about the silicon, basically, at this point to add salacious ooze, which I have done in the, since, and it works much better. But anyway, this was my first attempt. But you can see, it, it has a lot of the same features as what I was just showing you in that mud fossil, which is, uh, let's see, which is this right here. You see, don't forget, these are like little crystals and so forth. It's basically the same thing. And, and there's other shots I showed you I think are much better, but it is basically the same thing. That's, I can make mud fossils. Anybody can make them. So I think I've shown a pretty substantial amount of things here. And um, this is olivine. And these are the crystals that are in the olivine, which is in that bottom of that fingertip. And it's... Uh, it's quite apparent it's a fingertip, and it's quite apparent it's olivine, and it's quite apparent there's crystal fibers running through here, and all kinds of fibers all over the place. This is um, the way things will, will fossilize in certain conditions. This had to be in a lot of... Um, you know, blood. I mean, you can see the blood was coming out. Blood is all over here. It was in a, a, a pool of blood, really. And it took on whatever transition metals it wanted to stabilize. Sometimes they don't stabilize just with the things that they want. You know, you can't always get what you want, but you get what you need. That's what happened with mud fossils.